Uh, this hand is basically a six based on the number of lands, but on the play, I think this is a pretty good six. Um, yeah, it's basically like these six cards, which I would keep as a, like, would be on my high end of sixes. So it's definitely better than a mulligan. It's just like an extra land that I'm not really going to use, but whatever. So I think our sequencing is going to be to fetch a black green land and play the noble. Uh, I like that. Eh. Yeah, I like that better than fetching a green because I get to inquisition to him next turn with and play my nexus. That is a nice turn. So, I see Wreck, Bird, Decay, Roots, Ooze, Voice. So I think the cards I care about are Wall of Roots, or Birds of Paradise, or Decay. I think it's Decay that matters, um, because, so next turn I get to attack for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 1, or one 2, 3, 4, 5, Trample, uh, but the Decay lets him take away Trample during one of my combat phases to basically give him a turn by killing the Rancor. Uh, whereas this just gives my guys trample whenever. Uh, the other option would be to take one of his uh, lands, but none of his cards in his hand do anything. And if he draws a pod anyways, he's going to be able to cast it in time, which is going to be an issue. Uh, and him wrecked saging the Rancor doesn't matter. Him playing the Ooze doesn't matter. Him playing the Voice doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is literally if he can draw a pod or a Pontiff in time. Well, that wasn't in his hand, so I don't even think that matters. He goes, like, bird's wall still, right? Yeah. Yeah, because he can't get to uh, three power in one turn with the township, so he can't block down and kill my nexus. So I get at least three attacks with the nexus before he can kill it in combat. That should be lethal. Yeah, that looks right. As I look through the stack of cards to find some unplayable rare for Alex Magilton at this GP. It's probably not even in this stack or this box. My lovely, terrible sorting system that's finally resolving itself. It's my 2015 resolution is don't let my cards get unsorted the way they did between Valencia and now. I don't even think I had my cards really sorted for Valencia. I think I actually just slightly organized them. Very slightly. Uh... Oh yeah, you can't even uh, wreck sage my Rancor ever. I think voice is better than news because it leaves a guy? I don't really think his cards matter at all. Uh, probably just take the ooze. Voice? Voice doesn't do anything, because if he's sacking it, I'm dead anyways. So the card that matters is scavenging ooze, because it's slightly bigger and kills me a little bit faster. Play this. And I am going to fetch at some point with this Marsh Flats uh, before he untaps again. Uh, the basis for that being, I'd save it if I didn't have another land so that I could Groundswell Pump uh, and actually kill him through a Block Plus Township Pump next turn, like a double pump. 
Um, but because I have another land, it doesn't matter for the landfall, and I'd rather just not draw the over and two I'm going to fetch with it. Uh, shouldn't this be in my cleanup step? I'm not going to argue with it. I think that this effect wears off in cleanup, and at that point the trigger would happen. But Moto probably just displays as the end step for all of the small matters. Uh, why is there not a stop on my opponent's beginning of combat? Or is that mine? I don't know. More stops. More stops is always better. Random rares. Man, Bearscape was sweet. I think that card saw constructive play. It feels like it should have. Distinctly remember playing against this. It may have been out of like one of those holistic wisdom decks. Oh my gosh, I'm this art, everything is a bear. If you actually look at the art for Bearscape, literally everything that isn't a person. Oh, the foreground's not a bear? That's garbage. There's bear clouds, bear mountains, other bear mountains, other other bear mountains. I guess why that that would be why the card is called Bearscape, because it's a landscape made out of bears. Great. So he has voice, Rex age, and unknown. He basically has one draw step to hit and out. Good enough. Yeah, the decay, like, it's weird that I took a decay, or it's just weird to me that I took a decay when he had, a. Uh... when he, when I have a Nexus as my guy, but, uh, I don't know, it, it just feels weird, like, it's obviously right, it's just weird that, like, I'm so used to Nexus being the card that makes decay just not matter. That's just not what it was here. Well, who needs anything but lands? He basically has one more draw step. Does him drawing a pod next turn even matter? It might not at this point, actually. Yeah, because he, he... Yeah, it just doesn't matter. Unless you can find a Malira, which... I don't think he's going to have. The majority of decks have just caught that card by now. Which is part of the reason this deck's okay again. She can just, you know, crash through a Rhino. Can't beat a Malira, but... Beat a rhino. Just keep fetching away. The old uh, bluff that you have a kill spell that just doesn't exist in any of these decks in the format. I guess he could have a decay for the Nexus here. Or for the Rancor. And buy himself a turn. Or he can go to 15, which is more than 10. It's weird that that hyperlink text doesn't take you anywhere. You can only go one layer deep on that. 
I don't really want the caves against him. I want the dismember, which is why I set this up this exact way. I also want corruptors. I don't want glistener elf. Uh, that was something <clears throat> that I actually learned way back uh, that you don't want glistener elf against that deck. I want cage. Uh, and the reason you don't want elf, especially it, uh, the big change is that when they have uh, wall. Like, against the non-wall versions, it's kind of okay. You might be able to get your attack in. But against wall, it's just, like, completely impossible to attack with a Glistener Elf without blowing spells that you don't want to throw away. It feels weird to only be boarding in one cage, so I'm just kind of sitting here figuring it out, like, why I would not board in another cage. Maybe I don't want this because I'm boarding in cage instead as a hate card. And that's like too many things that do nothing. Like I have three cards that aren't. Uh, so I have three main and I go up to five. And maybe six is too many. Seems fine. It's possible I should probably have a Dryad Arbor in the board for the Jun matchup. It's a card that I didn't think about. Out. This seems like a great hand. Question is, what do I lead on with the... Eh, probably just lead on the fetch for green-black. He probably wants to take this card. He can probably fight this card. Fortunately, he's low on cards, and like my hand is very solid. So this card does a lot more harm to him than it normally should. Like, it's a lot harder for him. Like, if he has a pod, it's harder for him to make up for not having it because he only has three other cards left this game. And if he doesn't have a pod, uh, even if he doesn't, uh, he's low on cards to begin with, so his hand isn't going to be as good at doing anything. Uh, so I guess the point is, is like, you can actually lose games against their fair hands with this card in play, but with only six cards, his fair hand gets a lot worse. He's probably debating between the cage and the crusader. My guess being that he'll finally settle on the cage, which probably means that he has a pod in hand. Just go like if he's thinking this long. That's what I'm. What makes me think that this is the case. Interesting. Had it. Uh, yeah, I'll just lead on Nexus. Why not? Actually, the reason why... Oh, I took two damp... Uh, I wanted to cast the Cage this turn anyways. I want to cast the Stinger next turn anyways, so I'm going to take damage anyways. Uh, and the reason I would lead on the Nexus there is that it gives me a slightly marginally better... Uh, odds of drawing an overgrown tomb on this turn, which I would want to do given my hand because of this card. That's pretty absurd that if he like decays the cage and then we draw a fetch land, he actually just dies next turn to become immense. <laughs> Right, because we go to three cards in Graveyard? Yeah. Sing Collector, probably? Oh, Kitchen stinks. Not the one I'm looking for. <laughs> Again, if we draw a fetch, or no, we're one short if we draw a fetch land. One mana short, that is, not one damage. We definitely have the damage. We have uh, 10 in hand. This card is so silly. It's just a big snake dude with a shield. 
Why do you need a shield if you're that big? So we're going to just lead on the salvage, hope to hit a land. Uh, the land will then let us animate Nexus and attack this turn, and have mana for Crusader up next turn. Uh, I think I want the basic swamp. Do I want the Swamp or the Heath? Take three damage for the Heath. I think the damage actually matters more than the green mana. Like, if he has Kill Spell for Nexus plus Kill Spell for Hierarch, I get got, but I think I'm okay with that. I would have been completely devastated by, uh, like, Golgari Charm there, but I don't think those decks would ever have that card. Okay. <clears throat> Two. Also sweet is that if he taps out, he dies. Unless it's for uh, Archangel of Thune that I can't attack through. Which I'm guessing is what it's going to be. Or Shriek Maw. Nope, he's dead. <laughs> uh, I guess he could have Slaughter Pact. I kind of like the concept of not dying to Slaughter Pact. I guess that was kind of silly, because he can just block my Crusader with uh, Shriek Maw and buy a bunch of time. Well, now or never, I guess. If he has another removal spell, I'm dead. All of the above. Path to exile. I have been defeated. That was a lot of kill spells. I would have definitely run right... Oh! I should have killed him while he was tapped out. Why did I do that? Well, lesson learned. I was playing around Pact because of the last daily I played it. Or last... I don't even think it was a daily... But I played a tournament. I just like got packed it, uh, playing Zoo. And I was just like, oh, I never want to lose to that again. So I should have killed him while he was tapped out. Oh, well. Yeah, I like, even needed to draw the green source there, right? So I could cast Groundswell and uh, become immense in the same turn. I was still counting the Noble Exalted damage if he cast Shriek Maul. That looks really good. Lead on 
Blackland Noble. Is that right? Yeah, because that lets me draw a black land to Plague Singer him the next turn. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the right card to lead on. Maybe I could have led on Inquisition and crippled a mana guy hand. Since he did Mulligan. Uh, I think I do want an Inquisition here. I probably should have Inquisition last turn. Yep. Gonna get punished for that. He has lands and... Uh, Pod. I guess his pod for two mana doesn't really do anything. Like he still has to draw a dude. Like if I turn one Inquisition, turn two Stingered, I would have gotten in an attack first before you could resolve pod. Like that's not even like uh, like, it would have been an attack before he resolves it. Not even attack before he, uh... Yeah, lesson learned. Fire off Inquisition in the Dark on the play against that deck to just take a Birds or whatever. <clears throat> so he has Heath Catacombs Birthing Pod. Well, don't have Malira in your deck, please. <laughs> or we can do that to you. Had it. Thanks. Uh... I think I like attacking over playing the Plague Stinger. Must be nice. <clears throat> so he has two unknown cards in his hand? Just like kind of sitting here hoping that one is not an abrupt decay? That's fine. I'm very glad I did not cast Plague Stinger last turn. So I'll get in my damage, play my Plague Stinger this turn. He actually might activate Pod to sack his Pontiff to haunt his birds, so that if I attack, he can trade his birds for my attacker or a pump spell.
I have no effects. Seeing if, like, actually holding cards while motoing makes me pay attention to the game more, or if it just makes me shuffle a bunch of cards around like an idiot. Yep. That did not matter at all. Unless this is Rex, Sage, or Decay. Witness back path. See if I can prompt the uh, block this turn. Yeah, it's just something about playing that untapped land that just puts the fear in them. I guess I forgot his birds could tap for mana there. But, like, it's actually pretty cool that I bluff a uh, specific pump spell by doing that. Um, the specific one being that I bluff having vines plus another card. I don't really want to blow my vines to save my nexus there. I guess I might have wanted to blow it to kill his birds. I probably should have done that, like, very specifically to kill birds, because killing birds matters. That card doesn't matter. Oh, it makes a 4-4? Four, four. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I should... I should have done this just to kill this birds to get a blocker out of the way for the Crusader. I like this attack here. Ah, uh, because if he throws away a guy, I get to put him to a 3-3, which is, like, significant. If he throws away the birds, he loses the flyer. If he throws away this, he loses power. I think he's kind of obligated to block here. I don't know. We'll see if he feels like he is. The old birthing pod as four mana artifact, two mana sacrifice a creature. No other abilities. It's like a bad uh, spawning pit. Now do I pump? I don't think I do. Now we just have a protected stinger. I can take a single hit or two hits from his guys. Yes, leave back both of those to live, the green guys, the flyer, and the witness. It's nice that there's double up there, uh, so that he can't leave back blockers to the crusader.
trying to figure out if he's another green creature. I'm in trouble. If he had a decay, I think I died, like already dead. This whole Crusader versus Pod thing seems a little overrated. They do have a lot of green blockers. Not as many as they should, but a lot. I could have possibly just held back Crusader and played the Stinger. Don't think that really gets me anywhere quick. Especially if he opts to not block. Kind of went, hmm. Kind of want to know what would happen if I had uh, just left the Nexus in play. Though I, I think that post board I have more infect guys than I have pumps. It's even actually. Right, because I have four Nexus. <sighs> Do I attack with both here? I think I do. That forces a block here. If he doesn't block the Crusader. If he, if he had a decay, I was dead anyways to the pod. If he lets the Stinger through, I think I just let him take it. Because... <clears throat> Well, like, next turn he has to have a guy to have lethal, and then he also, like, I can block with the Nexus, and if he has the removal spell, um, I'm willing to run it and hope he doesn't have the decay. Oh, come on. Could have sworn. Like, if I had a decay in that situation, it just makes sense to me that I would cast it on the cage and I could have done something a lot more abusive in that board state. I guess maybe there <clears throat> isn't a creature you can really get that fights the Crusader, though. Yeah, I should have just let him take it and go to 8 Infect. Go to two if I block here. That removes one power. That removes three power next turn. So this saves me three life over two turns. And this saves me four, five life over two turns. So that's better. Ugh. Yep, dead because I punted that one pretty bad. Game two, at least. Game three, I had...